Hello crafty friends, this is the Papered Chef here. In today's Ink It Up tutorial, we're going to create this card here. Using all of the new ink colors, we're going to stamp with all the new ink colors. We're going to take the ink color new shimmer vellum, see that, and we're going to emboss it, use it for a card. We're going to use some new border dies. We're going to use the new designer series paper, okay, and we're going to use the new ink color cardstock. I'm and just for fun, I'm using something you can get now, okay, because everything in here is not available till May 4th, which is just right around the corner. But I'm going to use one stamp set that you can get now and then before it retires. I, I know, I'm sorry, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's retiring. Somebody can tell me. But anyway, it's available now. The others will be available May 4th. All right, so let's get started. And just so you know what I'm doing, this is the annual catalog, May 2nd to April 22. I'm featuring products from the annual catalog. In my last video, if you missed it, I did another, yet another unboxing of many, many new products. Some of the new products I unboxed just in the last video were this shimmer, shimmery vellum. I love it. And then I, I messed with it and I thought, oh, well, this might make a good swap card. I'm not really sure if I'm going to use it for my swaps, but I may. I mean, I just, I just am loving the way it's coming out. I'm experimenting with the different, the different uh, layouts and things like that. All right, so here's, here's the stamp set I used for the sentiment. So we'll get to that in a minute. Your friend, friends, friendships refresh the soul. Okay. I'm going to put that back in there so you can see. I, I always like to show you start to finish. What's an eraser doing in there? Huh. There's an eraser in my... How do, I don't know how that got in my stamp case. Hi, Jeanette. Okay. And then what I'd use for all these little hearts and things is always in my heart. I just wanted some hearts and flowers. And so I used the... Right, these little hearts and, and sprigs and things are from this stamp set, always in my heart. And then I found this little, from the hippo set, there's a hippo happiness set. I wanted a tiny little flower. I wanted to kind of splash the colors around of the ink color, so I found this little tiny flower from hippo happiness. Okay, so I would like to know, show you, and this is available now, and it's carrying over, okay? So we're going to use the new ink colors to stamp with. I'll go over those again in case you missed it. We're going to emboss the vellum with this, we're going to use the mini cut and emboss machine. This is available now. It's called Meadow Moments Embossing Folders. There's two embossing folders. We're going to use this one with the butterflies. Okay, so we're going to emboss the shimmer vellum. We're going to use the new border dies. Okay, there's, there's lots of new products I'm featuring in this tutorial. Anyway, let's get started with the ink colors. We have Fresh Freesia. Okay, Polished Pink. Evening Evergreen. Soft Succulent. And Pale Papaya. Okay, I have an ink color club. If over a five month period you'd like to collect all of the different inks and, and blends and markers and things, then that's cool. You can you can join that. If you're a demonstrator in my team, like I would they already pretty much were able to get the colors in the pre-order. So you if you already have any of the colors, it wouldn't be good to join the ink color club. But if you have none of the colors, you're a customer and you want to join and get all the colors over a five month period, pale papaya we're starting with, only because that's my favorite color of these five. All right, so what else do we have here? Who else do we have? Not what else. You guys are not what, you are who's. Who else do we have here? We have Jan. Hello, Jan. And um, Nola, I did put the team meeting on the replay, so I did upload that because Rita reminded me. So, yes, it's on the replay. It's on the, in our team. Um, hello, Nola, Barbara. And hello, Betty from Canada. No, you're not late. I'm just doing a very long introduction because I'm trying to explain all the different things the different products I use to make this card that we're about to make. So we're, we'll make this card some variation of it, a couple variations of it. And then we're going to use the mini cut and emboss machine. Okay, so that's, so what I've done ahead of time is, in the last tutorial, you, 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 I open the shimmer vellum. Okay, so we open this, I open the shimmer vellum and then here's, here's what the shimmer vellum looks like. Is this fantastic or what? And I cut it in, I cut it in, in half and then in half again. So they're 12 by 12 sheets of vellum, you get five colors. Okay, so like in my In Color Club, if you, we start with Pale Papaya, you're going to get a couple 6x6 six six samples of this shimmer vellum. Anyway, so now I'm down to 6 inches by 3 inches, okay? That's what we're starting with right now. you got to start with a 6 inch by 3 inch. Why? For several reasons. You want to emboss before you cut, and, and um, just because it'll give you better edges when you cut, like you emboss later. Like these, will, these edges will come up a little funky if you emboss after. So we're going we're gonna to emboss first, right? So we want, we want these size pieces because they fit in the embossing folder. I mean, for no other reason. There's, there's really no other reason we want them to fit in the embossing folder. So the, the little sandwich is going to be 
This is a sandwich when you emboss. You, your plate one, it tells you on the mini cut and emboss machine. Your plate one, and then it talks about the embossing folder. See, there's a little picture of an embossing folder. And then you put the plate three. That's it. That's how simple it is to emboss with the new, the, the new embossing folder. Yes, I do think the new greens make a nice layered look too. We could, we could layer them and do all kinds of stuff, right? All right, so I love, I mean, these are the two greens. These are the evening evergreen, and then I used the soft succulent. I just basically used all the colors in this card, and we're going to do that again. So let's take the, we'll do polished pink now, because I did one here. And I have some pale, I think I have a pale papaya example. Um, it doesn't matter. You're going to sort of mix and match. You're going to, you know, if you use this card background, right? If you use a pale papaya background, you would use a different color to, uh, to emboss. You always want some contrast. So here's a piece, and now we want the embossing folder. And I know I have not moved. I have not moved since I got here. So, like, it's really funny because I, I didn't move anything and it's, like, gone. Ah. I always amuse, my, amuse myself. Like, it's, like, funny how I set up the video. I said, okay, I have everything for the video. Poof, gone. So we're going to find it. <laughs> ah. I didn't put it back in the package. Oh, here, maybe I did. Okay, this is the other one. This is the other one that comes with it. And it's called Meadow Moment. And you guys are probably like, I see it. It's right there. No, I seriously didn't go anywhere. I stood right here and I put the camera on. On the, Here it is. Here it is. It, you know what? It was hiding under a scratch plate. So this is what it looks like. Okay. I'm the absent-minded professor. Let's get some better lighting in there. Okay. We're going to put this in there. Right? We're going to put the shimmer vellum in there like this. We're going to lower the, the top. Okay, and we're going to emboss it. So we have our plate one, right? Our plate one, our plate three. When you use the mini cut and emboss machine, don't try to put them straight in. Don't try to put them in like that. They just don't catch very well. You have to put them in like that, right? Or like that. But it's okay. As long as the embossing folder squished between these plates, it's okay. Just kind of just kind of stagger it a little bit. Okay, we'll move that off to the side and move the little. So you open up the little mini machine. I like this mini machine, not only because it works for my demonstrations in the videos, but I like it because it's just so convenient. And I, you can sit there and like, you know, use it. I can take it. It's like portable. Okay, so I'm going to push that in a little bit. Give it a little push. I'm going to roll it through. So I was just amazed when I saw the shimmer vellum embossed. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then I didn't need my, I have vellum adhesive, but I didn't need it because like the regular adhesive doesn't, sh doesn't, um, kind of come through because it's a dark color it, it comes through a little bit but not like not like it does on regular vellum but I do have vellum adhesive as well I'll link to that but look at that I mean it that's that's not stamping up my vellum adhesive I'm going to use seal plus for that is that amazing or what so let's do that again for the ooh ah wow factor we'll do another color we'll do the uh, pale papaya okay we're going to pay before we do the borders dies because just just to do another one of these while I have this out. While I have the sandwich made, right? While I have the sandwich made. So we're going to put a piece of pale papaya in there. And it's also a good review for those of you that aren't used to embossing. I'm putting that in there. I'm closing it. Doesn't even matter if it's crooked because it's a scene, right? It's a scene that you're embossing. You're going to put the plate one down. Plate one. That's the sandwich. The embossing folder. Plate three. Plate number three because that's what it says. Stagger them a little bit. And you're good to go. Yeah, so Barbara's saying, yes, she has a terrible time catching. So that's why, Barbara, is you got to stagger them. And um, Jeanette thinks it's stunning. Yes, the new vellum is stunning, Jeanette. And um, <laughs> welcome to my world, she's, Barbara's saying, okay. I'm actually getting to see the comments this time. Jeanette, yep, she's. you guys are all chatting with each other, which is good. All right, Jen and Jeanette, I'm glad you guys are all chatting. So anyway, I'm going to push, I'm pushing it in. See how I'm pushing it in with one hand? Right, and I'm pushing it to help catch it, and then I'm kind of um, cranking it with the other hand, right? Hi, Millie. You're never late, Millie, because I don't even announce these. I just go live when I can get my husband to stop sucking all my bandwidth because I have very spotty internet. I like, literally either have to send him away or make him turn off all his devices or I won't have any bandwidth to go live or not any of you guys get cut off. So look at that. So that's the shimmer vellum and busing. So I do this first. I do the shimmery vellum embossing before I do the die cutting because um, it, it just leaves like really better edges, just better edges for me. So now we'll do the die cutting. 
And the, it, it kind of, the, the way that the butterflies were facing is how I decided on how to do my cards. Because you see how the butterflies are facing, like, you see how they're facing, um, like, this way, horizontal? So I ended up doing horizontal cards only because of the way this embossing folder was. Don't try to, don't try to cut through two at once. This is delicate vellum and it does kind of rip a little bit. So you don't want to cut through two pieces at once. You know, and vellum, whenever you work with vellum, be careful. You know, you, know, you don't want to. So now, now we're going to do the die cutting. So we're going to do, we're going to take the plate one. We're done with that embossing folder. Again, that was available now. Meadow Moments. And um, when I say now, there's two catalogs. One's retiring. This one's taped shut. I can't show you the inside. This one is, this one's going on till June. There's three catalogs, actually. This one's going on till June. So you still got ton of, plenty of time. January to June, the mini catalog. This one is the one I'm talking about, available now. So the Meadow Moments is in one of these two. It's, it's on our website. This one's available till May 4th, but a lot of products are carrying over. It's not like the whole catalog is retiring, only some. But that's what I mean by available now. All right. So let's, let's um, what do we say? Plate one. Now we're getting rid of the embossing plates, and now we're going to do the die cutting. So you want to put, so for this next sandwich, we're going to die cut. Let me show you what we're die cutting first, and then we'll die cut. But you see how I have a scratch plate? There's two plate number twos. They're exactly the same, but I've done a lot of cactus or cacti, right, on here, and it's lots of scratch. I, cactus, literally, like there's an actual die that's a cactus, and it does put little prickly things all over my plate. So you always want to keep, you know, it's my sacrificial plate. You put it at the bottom. It's already scratched, right? Then you put the nice plate on the top. I use it a little bit on the bottom, but, I mean, once in a while, but it's, it's mostly a clear, it's kind of not as, you know, scratched and warped. So that's the top plate. So you need two of these whenever you die cut. And then you always need your base plate. Okay, so now the die cutting is one number one and two number two. So let me show you the dies before we die cut. So here are the dies. I unboxed these a couple videos ago. These are fantastic. You can make clouds. By the way, those of you that have paper pumpkin kits, the new paper pumpkin kit, this makes nice clouds with the rainbows. I saw someone do that. Okay, but that's all I've seen used. I haven't seen these other ones used. But I decided to use this one because I like how it's sort of scalloped and everything. All right, so when you see this die, there's, there's a couple things to notice. There's, there's a line in the middle. That's what's going to cut. These other ones are going to make dot, 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 or dash, dash, dash. Hey, that sounds like SOS, right? <laughs> dot, dot, dash, 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 dot, right? So it's going to make dashes or dots, and so that's okay. So one side will make dashes and one side will make dots. So you, by making this three-inch piece, you literally now, you, you actually have, you, when you put this die there, right? And if you put it in the right spot, don't cut off your butterfly. That's important, see? When you put this die there, the zigzag die, you're going to cut down the middle, but you're going to have dashes on one side, dots on the other. So you have two pieces for cards. This one's going to be on the bottom of a card. This one will be on the top. You can put them on the top and the bottom of the same card, but I would say don't use the same color. You know, vary it. Like if you're going to do the top polished pink, I'd maybe do the bottom uh, pale papaya, right, just to vary it. So you're going to put that there, and we're going to cut the border dies. Okay, so this is the border dies. Borders. Border dies? Yeah, D I E S. Yeah, it's, it's plural. Basic border dies. Another new product coming up. And so it's going to be like one of those staples you have in your craft room. That's what I think of when I see a die like this. Now, I did it a couple times and it did slip on me. So what you do is you get a little piece of painter's tape or washi tape and you want to tape it down. But don't, like I said, don't cut off that one butterfly there. That's your kind of critical butterfly that's going to sort of be like your, you want that in the picture. That should be on your card. Right? So I'm just kind of taping it down a little bit. You could tape both sides if you want. I mean, one side's okay to tape. And then you're going to stick that top cover on there. And you're just going to, oops, let me push that through. Oops, I'm pushing, okay. Make sure it's all on the plate, right? And then you're going to put the top plate on there. Vary it a little bit. Like, in vary meaning stagger, right? Stagger your plates. Stick it in there. And we're going to die cut the border. And we'll do that twice. We're going to die cut the one we just did in pale papaya. And we're going to die cut the one we just did in fresh Freesia, no, not fresh freesia. Polished pink. Polished pink. All right. This is amazing. I When I came out, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I need to do this for my swaps. I'm, I'm, I have a couple different swaps coming up, and I'm just, you know, I mill ideas around in my head. I want to use new products, and then it, when I see something like this happen, I'm like, that's it. There's the product. See how it does it? There's the dye. Don't worry that it's a little ripped there because we don't need that. So see how it got a little ripped on that side? So now that's how you know where to cut it because we have extra. This is this is uh, six six inches. So what you do is you take it does rip a little. Sometimes it rips a little if it hangs out. That's only because it hung out of the embossing folder, not because it rips. We'll do another one and it shouldn't rip. This one I'm just snipping. 
This side's fine. This side's totally fine. But this side is where I'm going to cut. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. How I do that. So, because I have ripped some. Or actually, this side's the side I'll cut. No, this side. Because that's the butterfly that would be on the top. Okay? So, I hope that makes sense. Now we're going to do it again. Just, just, just always for reinforcement. We'll say hello to whoever came in. I think I said hello to Maria and Joanne already. So we're... All right. So now we're going to do... Oops, that piece already ripped. <laughs> you must be like, wow, it rips a lot. It does kind of rip. I've had a couple of rips on it, but maybe because it's the way I manhandle my crafts, right? All right, so let's put that plate number one, plate number two. Put the die down. I mean, I am not gentle, as you can tell. I just do whatever. I, I'm not gentle, but I also don't sweat the small stuff. Like, I'm not going to sweat ripped vellum because it's... Um, is once you get it on the card, you got a little extra on each side. And once you get it on the card, because you only need 5.25 inches on the card, then it's fine. It doesn't rip. I'm just going to go ahead and put the plates together. I mean, once it's glued down there. And I use some Seal Plus to get it to stay. Okay, push it in. It, see, it's not going all the way through because we be jamming. We be jamming. It's not catching. There it goes. It catches. Okay, so I'm die cutting. The border for the pale papaya. All right, now we can get. Now we're done with the little mini die cut and emboss machine. These items, if you like something like this, it's a great half price item if your order's big enough, or it's a great little item to put in a starter kit. Or you could put the big giant embossing machine in your starter kit, and then, you know, then you. It's just a good item to have, but it's 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 one of those high price items. So I just tell people, hey, if you want one of the high price items, it's good to join and get it as part of your starter kit. So there's the border, and there's that fantastic dash, dash, dot, dot, dash, dash. You see what I mean? Like the top has the dashes, the bottom has the dots. See, and they would make nice layers. Put the layers of vellum on top of each other. You could do all that too, and that really hides your adhesive if, you've, if you want to use glue, or it does hide your adhesive. I found that I was trying to use, I was actually using vellum adhesive, and then I didn't need it. I mean, I have vellum adhesive. It worked good, but it's not as strong, like as far as... Um, it's not as strong as the seal plus like this is stronger than my vellum adhesive right but so I just rather use this and as long as this doesn't really shine through we're okay shine through the card all right so there we go let's put our let's put our little mat there for stamping and let's do all the stamping now and as you can see I have four of these so I can make a couple cards at once and then I can show you my little trick for cutting off the rip parts and everything else so here's the card we're making We'll just kind of start stamping here. We'll just have some fun. We'll let, put that there for you to see. We're doing something like that. Where we're going to take the friendships, refresh the soul. I'm, I'm just putting this border back. And I, I do like to keep them on magnetic sheets. But hey, this is exciting times. I just opened up the package. I just started using it. So there's, I haven't I even had time to put it on a magnetic sheet yet. So I, I always start with the sentiment. Because if you mess up the sentiment, you just flip the, you flip the whisper white. Or sorry, we're going to call it basic white paper over. So always start with the sentiment. If you mess up the sentiment, you flip the paper over it. But then after that, if you mess up the embellishments, you add bigger embellishments on top of them. Things that maybe you cut out with the scan and cut in your bucket of crafty goodness. So you just have like, a, you know, your, your stuff. So always start with the sentiment. Always use the dark color. So we're going to use Beauty of Friendship. It's a new stamp set in the annual catalog. And um, this is a new way to store stamps. You just stick them right inside the case, which is kind of cool. I like that. You stick them right inside. Instead of sticking them back on the sheet and trying to figure out whether they go right side up or right side down, you just stick them right in the case. Okay, so um, we're going to put that on a stamping block, uh, let's see, H, because it's long. And you're and I always just stamp it onto the mat first, and then we're going to use our little rubber pipe piece. So evening evergreen. Always use your darkest color for your sentiment. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, it's stamping okay. Maybe one more time because it's kind of light. Okay, it's good. So now I know that it's good. Stick that there for a second. Get your little rubber mat out. And get your pieces of whisper, or sorry, basic white. I always say whisper white. These are pieces of basic white. I've already cut them as wide as I need them, four inches. But I haven't cut off the, the other part yet. And there's a reason I haven't cut off the other part yet. Because it helps if I cut the vellum in this together. So we're going to put this down. These long pieces, these are eight and a half by 11 right now. I'm not eight and a half by 11, they're four inches by 11. They're 11 inches wide right now, but you're gonna see. So you need your little piece of vellum as a guide that's gonna kinda go there, right? 
and that's the upside down butterfly. You need the top one here. So say this is your, there's your rip piece. Okay, here's here's a butterfly. Is it the right side up? Yeah. I love this other side too. I think that looks cool as can be, but that's just harder to glue because it's not the flat side. So there, so that's our butterfly. So that goes there. That's kind of your guide. So you put the sentiment under it. Don't don't adhere that yet, but you just have to know where to put the sentiment. Right. So you're just putting it there as a guide. happy when it stamps right. Okay, we'll leave that for a minute. We're going to get back to that. We'll do a couple more because, hey, live or not, let's be efficient and stamp what we need to stamp, right? And we'll put one of these there. Stamp a couple at once because if I mess up the next stage, you know, we've got a couple stamped, right? Dot, dot, dot. Tap, tap, tap. Friendship ref friendships refresh the soul. All right, I think that's enough to give you the idea of what I want to do next. Okay, so we got that part. So the next thing why did I scare you? Because I sung? <laughs> my singing scares you? I know, my singing is horrendous, but I'm excited. I'm excited when I get my stamp, my stamp works correctly the first time. So what you want to do now is you want to tear these, or not adhere them, you want to do the cutting and then you can tear them. But you want to cut exactly, you want this to cut exactly five and a quarter. So, and you want to make, so the reason, you know, you know you're going to, let's see if this was one of the ones, this one didn't get ripped at all, so this one will be easy to show you. Well, then we'll do the rip one. Yeah, I mean, there's just a tiny piece there, but that's awesome. So we're going to line that up. Oh, no, this one did have a little bit of uh, something on that side. Let's see what we can do with that side. Two, two. Let's see. We'll just use one of these from earlier. Oh, pieces. Pieces of paper. Lots of... I'm just trying to find, because they do get... This is a very strong machine, and they get a little bit of... Now that's an upside down one. That's a right side up one. So first of all, we need to cut off this side. So that's the first thing because there's a little rip in the corner. I don't know if you can see that. There's a rip in the top corner and I want it to be, I don't want this rip in the top corner to show. So, okay, so now we got it the size we want it. So, oops, the rip is still in the top corner. What is going on with that rip? And use a new sharp blade when you're working with vellum. My blade is a brand new blade. Okay, good. So there. So now I'm going to put my vellum there, and then I'm going to go to 5.25. This is how I've been cutting my vellum to match my cardstock exactly. Because otherwise you're brown to have, if you measure your vellum 5.25 and then you emboss it, it shrinks in size. So you see what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? I'm making this 5.25, and I'm going to just cut the vellum and the cardstock together. Now I have a perfect match. See how perfect my card matches? It's because I cut the piece of whisper or basic white, it's called, and the vellum together. And I also cut off the rip pieces at the same time. So you're killing two birds with one stone, not that we want to kill any birds. And now I'm using Seal Plus, Seal Plus adhesive, which I was thinking was going to shine through, but it doesn't. It's pretty cool. I mean, it, sh it shines through a little bit, but I want to use the strongest adhesive possible, right? And I, versus the vellum, I have vellum adhesive that doesn't shine through, but it's not strong. And this stuff needs strong adhesive because it's bumpy. Oops. Okay, let me get this. Sometimes it gets jammed up, my little. But don't take it out of your rollers, whatever you do. Because if you want to see real jammed up, leave it in your roller, but just shove it back on the roller if that happens. Okay. We'll do this again with the polished pink so you get to really see it. Okay, a little piece of... I got some extra adhesive in the bumps under there. Somehow it got a little bumpy under there. I don't know what happened. Yeah, just, just get rid of any big bumps because the bumps will shine through. You just want rolls, you just want lines of adhesive, not bumps. So for some reason I'm getting like a little bumpy. There we go. That's good, that's good. So we're gonna line that up and it's perfect and then we're gonna do the other one. We'll do the polished pink. Look at how nice. So your card is already like great as it is. Now, what I was telling you about the other piece is the, the, the bottom piece, the one where the butterfly is facing up, right? You can make those the bottom of a card and look how cool that would be on a card. But I tried that and I thought it was a bit too much because I, I thought rather use designer series paper down here, right? Because I just thought you already, like this is your main element of your card. So why put another piece of vellum down there? But you can. 
So just feel free to use that idea and make some other, put some vellum down there, experiment with your different border dies. Okay, I thought it would also, when I was doing this, I thought it would look like a mouth of something, like a monster's mouth. See, you could do something like, you know, some kind of interactive card with looks like something's opening and closing its mouth. But, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. All right, let's do another one. We're going to, so that's Friendship Refresh the Soul. And you know how we cut this one? We're going to do another one. But this one, it's ripped on this side. See, it's ripped on that. Is that the one? Nope, we'll find it. We'll find it. I just did it. And we have one that's here. It's like I haven't even gone anywhere and it's already gone. Okay, there you go. See how it's ripped on that side? So what I want to do for that one, even though this is going to be on the top, right? This is the top piece. So I want to turn it over. I want to cut off that side. Let's see. Oh, wait, first, that one we want to... We want to cut off both sides. We'll do the we'll do the 5.25 for the paper. Then we'll cut off the other side. So we need the 5.25. We'll just cut off the other side. Manually first is what we'll do. We'll just cut off this piece manually. And hopefully this piece is long enough now. So you always got to get rid of those ripped pieces. Like I said, it just ripped because the machine's so strong. You know, if you have another machine that's not as strong, like maybe the, maybe the larger die cutting machine does not make the vellum rip as much. There you go. So what I'm doing is 5.25. But my little machine, and see how I'm just trimming it exactly the size I need it. Okay? 5.25. Now I'm going to add the vellum. So what I did is I got rid of the little rip piece first off the one edge. See, it's a six inch piece. So you got, don't, don't try to glue it before you get rid of the little rip pieces is what I'm saying. The little rip pieces. You can, you can then decide which edge to get them off of. All right, and it's not always going to rip, like I said. I mean, when I used the bigger machine, I don't think I had as many rips, but the vellum does rip a little. In, embossing vellum is really fun. If you just emboss the regular vellum and not the shimmery vellum, then you can do some coloring with your brayers or your, your blending brushes. Okay, so there's that. Now, now we'll do the rest of the stamping. And don't worry if you mess up. You're just going to add extra bling, you know, do stuff if you mess up. We can cover it up with extra things. You can always cover up your mistakes with embellishments. So let's do, uh, so we've already used this color. And the only other reason I used that color was for these, this little sprig. So I would like to use this soft succulent next. I'm just going to open up the soft succulent and I'm going to use the little sprig. The little sprig from that stamp set. Okay, oops, you put, put your little, it's from here, always in my heart. Nice little sprig. I uh, always put your rubber mat down. Got to find it now. I know you guys are probably like, I see it. I see it. Even though I can't see things. Unless I look through my camera. <laughs> you guys can probably see things in my camera that I can't see. There you go. Putting that little rubber mat down. And I'm putting the little, I'm stamping the little sprig over here. Okay. Nice. Can you see that? Oops. I'll do it again over here. Can you see that? Sprig. Put that over here. We're just going to do both, both cards at once, right? Let's be efficient and do both cards at once. Okay, good, good, good. That's all I need this one for. That was the soft succulent. I don't need that color anymore at all. So we'll do a little bit of evening evergreen. But for the evening evergreen, it was too dark when I did the little next sprig with evening evergreen. So in, for the evening evergreen, I did take it in sort of off stamp a bit. I did like that. I stamped off. That's called stamping off. So you're stamping onto the paper, and then you're stamping onto here. See? Okay, that's called stamping off. It's also called second generation stamping. Stamp on there, and then stamp onto there. Okay, good enough. Now we need some flowers. Now let's use the other colors. Close the evening evergreen. We'll do some flowers and hearts and things. So for the fresh... Oh, here, let's put that over there. Um, this little, we'll do this, we can do this little flower. This is from the Hippo Happiness. But I'm thinking some hearts first. And I did, I tried the different hearts and I kind of like, I like these hearts better. So I'm going to use like the little open hearts this time. These hearts kind of came out too dark for me. I'm liking the open hearts. We'll do, we all like an open heart. All right, so we'll do this little open heart. We'll put, okay. Actually, you know what? Sometimes, 
These these are these are stamping blocks that came with one of the kits. They're not as thick. I like when I do when I do things. I like to use my thicker my thicker stamping blocks. They give me the little edge to hold on to. So that's my own preference. So let's stamp the little hearts on there. Perfect. Okay. I'm just I always check you know check that the hearts are working. All right, wherever can we put these? Where can we put these? Because we need room for the designer series paper. There we go. Put it over there. So I'm putting it out to you. Got to have room down there because we're going to put the two strips of designer series paper at the end. We don't put them on last because we might need those to cover mistakes with, right? So we don't know where to put those yet. It depends on if we mess up on something. All right, good. Got some hearts. Now I'm going to do a lighter color of those hearts on the other side. Or actually, I can use, I'll use the solid one. What I'll do is I'll use the solid one with the pale papaya because I just thought those solid ones were too dark. So I'm going to use the solid pale papaya for the solid hearts. So here are the solid hearts. And we'll use pale papaya. And we will stamp off a little bit. Okay, nice. I've already lost the little flowers. See, so be careful with your little flowers. Okay, good. There it is. And we're going to do it right there. Oh, I like that better. I like those hearts better as a solid heart than these hearts because these hearts are already so, you know, so bright. Okay. And again, I'm just trying to, what I'm trying to do here by doing all this is just represent all the colors in my ink. I'm trying to stamp all the colors. So now we'll get this little flower and we'll use, I'm going to take this off of the stamping block and use the same block again because I like it because it's thick and it has little ledges to hold on to. I like this one a lot. It's a C, it's block C. I have like more than one of every block. Okay, so now we're going to use the color we haven't used yet, the fresh freesia, and we'll do a few flowers. And then we'll have every color represented. See, we'll have every color in the card, every color of ink represented. So for this one, you're just stamping off on there and you're going to do some that are some that are bright, like the first step generation stamping, right? And you could do some that are not so bright. You know, just a little like that. But if you're going to do flowers like that, do, do three. Okay, so maybe we'll do one that's not so bright over here. We'll do it. We'll do it up there. It's okay. Okay, so we're going to do three. And we'll do a three over here. So we'll do one that is, and we're going to, we have bling to kind of fill in the rest. Bling, we're going to use bling to fill in the rest of bling. We'll do that one that is bright. And then this one that's not so bright. So we have three flowers. Okay, pretty cool. Got our colors. Now we need some bling. We'll do our designer series paper and we'll be done. We'll put it on a card base. So we have our little, um, bling. We're going to use our in color bling. Actually, we can put the bling on after we attach it. So we'll, first we do our card, so a designer series paper. So last, last time I showed you this paper. We, we unboxed it in the last video. This is the designer series paper since then. I cut it into strips. I thought this was the perfect paper to use for this card because it's already in strips. I mean, it's already like the flowers make perfect strips. So we could do something like that. And because we have fresh freesia there, or polished pink there, we're going to use fresh freesia here. See? See how that works? See how that works? And then this one, because we have this pale papaya there, we would use again the soft succulent. We can use the soft succulent there. But then we would use one of these. We would use like this color or this color or, or even all three colors. But you see what I'm saying? But you would, if we can fit all three, but we probably can't. So we can only fit two. That's okay. So let's see. We already got a lot of fresh freesia inside there. And I try to get the pattern that kind of matches up the pet, the paper above it, but it doesn't really matter where I cut it. Yeah, I guess that's okay. It doesn't matter if they, the flowers line up. All right, so there you go. So then we're going to try that. So now I'm glad you guys are sharing tips and techniques. That's what did I do? I put it at the bottom. See how I put it attached to the bottom? I just wanted to make sure I did the same thing. So we will attach the piece to the bottom. Right against it. So we're going to start with the... And I want these to line up exactly, so I use my paper snips. Don't use your trimmer this time because you've already done your trimmer. You don't want to trim the card. You're just going to use your paper snips to get the part that's hanging out. Let it all hang out. Right? We'll get that off later. 
Unless you find it easier getting off one at a time. I, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can just cut off one at a time. It might be easier for you to handle one at a time, see? I'm just snipping it off. That's all. But if, if you want to snip off both at one time, that's fine too. And if you want the pattern to line up exactly, I'm going to let it hang off both sides. See what I'm doing? I'm letting the pattern line up. I hope you can see that. Okay. So now I get to snip off both sides, see? Okay. Yeah, this is the hippo. You guys asking where the flower's from? Thank you guys for answering each other's questions. Oh, Lara's asking. I'm glad you guys are answering each other. Beth and um, here, Betty's asking. Okay, where are the... Laura Ann is asking where the, where the little flower's from. Now, remember last time I did a video and I did something like with the love you, what's it called? Lovely you. But this one, I just found this little flower from here. The hippo happiness. Just use whatever. This, anything works for this. This card, absolutely any stamp set will work. You just need little flowers, hearts, and sprigs. And you can use the lovely you stamp set. So you don't have to use the one I'm using. I'm just, I just found something that would work. And I didn't want to use Lovely You again because I was just got done doing Lovely You so much that I was kind of burnt out from it. I was burnt out from all the Lovely You cards I made last week. Could have been the week before. It's all kind of a blur. But anyway, I just wanted to change it up. And by the way, this heart. Oh, there goes something I have to cover up with. the. See? Ink got on there. That's when you put the bling on there. Or that's when you can put three strips of designer series paper. There you go. That's when you use, that's my cover-up technique. Remember I said don't worry about stamping and messing up. So now we'll use that extra piece of, uh, of this. We'll put that underneath. We'll put one of these. See how I got some extra little strips left over? We'll put one of them in the middle. But that is too small for the, you need glue for that one. Okay, let's see. Let's use whatever glue I have. I think I have some tacky glue handy. Oh, here's some. Yeah, my multi-purpose glue has never been open. Oh, here, here's one. I have one that's open. I have another one that's not been open, and you don't want to try to open one on camera. But this one's been open, so we'll use this one. So when you want to cover up a, a mistake, that's it's no problem. That's what. The, that's why you want to adhere these strips last for that exact reason. I didn't. I didn't do it on purpose. I if I had done it on purpose, that's what I would have done. Had I done this on purpose, I would have made the smudge right there to tell you that you do add your paper last because it's like this exactly makes my point. And then if not, and you add your bling last. Always add your bling last because your bling helps cover up mistakes too. There's some bling that's bigger than other bling. Okay, and then I want that to line up. See how I want that? Those. See how I want these flowers to line up with that? So I'm putting them like that on top of each other. There'll be a little bit of paper hanging out the sides. And by the way, if you're missing it, that's what I'm, that's what I'm covering up. Yeah, yeah, bling is necessary. <laughs> Betty said, it's no mistake, it's artistic expression. That's true, it's true. I mean, I don't worry about mistakes. I just, I don't really worry about them. I just, I just cover them up and fix them. And when I, when I mount my cards upside down, which you guys have seen me do so many times on my channel, I just turn them around. There's a little bit of glue sticking out the middle. When I just turn them around and um, I cut them apart and mount them onto something else in a bigger card. <laughs> so the more times I make them upside down, the bigger the card keeps getting. Oops, uh, mounted it upside down again. Put it on a bigger matting. Next thing you know, I got this like five by seven card with all these extra matting. <laughs> all right, so there you go. Then you can cut off those extra edges because you've lined them up where they go. And they're exactly lined up. That's... That's the kind of stuff you do while watching Netflix and things, right? These are, these are extra little things you do later. You know, you do all your stuff. You're stamping at your table, your craft table. But then these other things you can do with a little... I call this... My, my little lap desk is my, um, my Simply Scored. I use it as a lap desk. I, that scoreboard. This thing. I sit and watch TV and I kind of do those extra, those extra things with this. That's, that's what I use it for. On my lap. All right. So then we, put, then we want a piece of card stock and we're done and some bling but we put the bling on last because you try it's hard to attach the bling when it's hard to attach the bling when you have um you know like bumps on when you're trying to fold your card stock so i just want to show you the card stock and 
we want to cut it. Let's see. I like this way because it stands up. So I like this way. So for that one, we need to score at. I mean, we need to cut. I'm sorry. We need to score at. At five and a half. So what should we use? I think evening evergreen would look nice, right? We'll just use evening evergreen. So we're going to cut. Well, we can, well, we can do the scoring at the same time and then we can cut, but if we're going to cut at five and a half, we want to score at four and a quarter. So we want to cut this, we want to, we want to make these cards five and a half, just so you see it. So we want to make these cards five and a half, but we want to score first. We want to score the paper, the cardstock at four and a quarter. So this is eight and a half by 11. So if you score at four and a quarter, then when you cut it by five and a half, you already got your two cards made. I hope that makes sense. I scored it four and a quarter. I normally would have had the card bases made, but I got so excited and wanted to share this card before it got too late. So anyway, you're getting to see me make the card base from scratch. But see, now I'm going to go five and a half on the trimmer. Always use the edge of your trimmer. Don't try to eyeball it. Always use these edges. They help you. They help you line everything up. Five and a half. Boom, boom. We got our two cards already scored because we scored it at the same time. And then while you're there, while you have your trimmer here, you, when you use your spatula to, to flatten out your cards, always use like the edge. See how you can use the edge of your Simply Scored or your trimmer to flatten out your cards. And you just need any kind of spatula. Let's see. My friend's daughter was playing in here. And she was using my paper pumpkin kit. And you should have seen how much... How much bling she put on cards so i'm just looking for any spatula here we go there's a spatula so you see what i did that was a valley so when you score you got a valley and then when you turn it over you have a see that's a valley but then you have a, a peak when you turn it over so i always turn it over and that's what side i i i make the card from yeah this green is nice with because the, then it's going to be good contrast for our two cards okay okay now we're doing that again we did it that was the valley we flip it over that's the peak or the mountain. And we use a spatula. Always use a spatula, a bone folder, something. This is my Pampered Chef. I mean, I'm the paper Chef. This is one of those Pampered Chef scraping stones. It works great as a spatula for crafting. I have about I have about five different spatulas I use. I use some putty, some for some for like uh, I, use, I use one that's a cricket spatula from another machine. Alright, so what we're doing is now we're mounting it on here. Then we're doing our bling and then we're done. Okay, we're doing it. Then we've made two cards in that time, but we could have made four or five if I wasn't teaching. So you could have made four or five in this time. So probably, you know, give yourself about 15 minutes per card because you're, it's the it's more efficient when you make a lot of cards at once. This kind of goes, this my little, my little seal plus is going crazy today. But I like the seal plus better than the, uh, than the, the regular seal. Although it does get caught sometimes. And you could put a piece of uh, whisper or basic white on the inside of your card. Oh, always, when you mount it, put it behind on a white background. Because if I would have kept that behind there, I'd have mounted it wrong. Because <laughs> I would have been looking at the other evening evergreen behind it. So you want to mount it with that quarter inch around it. I like a quarter inch. Sometimes I use an eighth inch for projects. But this time, when I'm using just white cardstock, I use like a quarter inch one. It mounted a tiny bit crooked. And you can maybe catch it before you have pushed down all four sides. Ugh, stretch, stretch. Stretch Armstrong. Yep, it's good. I think I've mounted it good. And we'll do this one. And then we'll add our bling. And our bling we're going to use is the in-color bling. Which was just sitting right here seconds ago. We will see if we can find unearth the in-color bling. I didn't take it anywhere. I didn't go anywhere. And things just disappear in my craft room. Right before my very eyes. Oh, that one has a little bit of stuff sticking out. Do you see that? little bit of stuff sticking out designer series paper out the edge it's okay though don't cut off your card base just get the part sticking out oh yeah okay so there we go and now we have three different styles to show you with them we just add our bling and we're done oh i could have used a we can even use these gina genial gems they're going to be part of i think the first month of my in color club every every month in the in color club 
you're getting a pack of gems because I'm not going to have time to separate them into like, you know, so you're just getting a whole pack. And every month, whatever is available, you're getting a pack of gems that'll go with things. But sometimes things will be on back order. But these ones I'm thinking are going to go first. They're called genial gems or genial gems, genial gems. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that. But that's what's going to come first because, because these, I have a feeling, are going to be sold out or back order right away. These are called, because of the product limits, because we were allowed two of these in the pre-order, genial gems, but we were only allowed one of these, I'm, I'm thinking because of that, these are the in-color gems, that these might go on back order quickly. So that's why I didn't want to start with them in my in-color club. All right, so let's put some bling. We don't have anything to mix to, uh, to cover up. See? There's nothing to cover up, but we need a bling there and a bling there and a bling there because we need three bling, or you need five bling. So you want to take your, so that's already a dark color. This is the evening evergreen. So you don't want to put the evening evergreen next to evening evergreen. So take one of these little, these little polished pink ones and put that over here. Maybe, hmm, maybe down here. Okay. Oops. It just landed. It, there we go. Landed. There you go. That's a big one. Then we'll take, there's a pale papaya right there. So we'll put something else there. We'll put, now we'll put a soft succulent up there. The little one, just a little one. There you go. We'll put it up in any little empty space you find. Like there's a cute little place for the bling. And then we need a third bling. We'll put a third bling down there. Okay. Uh, here, we'll put it, we'll put this little purple one. Okay. Or a fresh freesia. So you add your bling. If you want to add more bling, add another odd number. So like put one there and there, like make it five. And then if you want to do seven, that's fine. Do seven. But see, I'm using them sparingly because like my friend's daughter, like I said, she went in here. She's like, oh, I love all this bling. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, not that bling. Of all the bling that you're going to use, don't take the bling I'm very limited in. Okay, let's see. We'll put this one here. Okay, no, that one is, that one's too, we don't want to put the pink next to the pink. We'll put, we'll put this one. We'll put one of these up there. Okay. Up at the top. And then we'll put a couple small ones. I'm like, if, if they realize, like, this is my one pack. But you can't tell kids no, right? I mean, not when they want to craft. you got to let them craft and be be crafty and be express themselves. But I was like, I was trying to give her all my retired bling. But she saw this and liked it. All right, there you go. So, that, so to review, if you just got here late, what we did is... In the last video I started out, I, in the last video I unboxed my, my new annual catalog products. And when I was unboxing the shimmer vellum, I said, oh, this vellum would look really nice embossed. And when I was unboxing this new designer series paper, I was like, oh, I can't wait to put these on cards. So then what I'm doing now is I'm following up with the unboxing video by actually showing you projects. And I have an Ink It Up series. So if you're new to my channel, that's what I do. Every time it says Ink It Up, I show you how to make something. Cards, it's techniques. It's, it's always a techniques, cards, coloring, right? Okay, so that's what we did. We embossed the vellum, and we got these pieces. The pieces that are going to go horizontal, but that butterfly's upside down. So if you're going to use that on a card, you would flip it over and use it like that. Because this butterfly is, should be facing up. Okay, so what I did is I embossed these with the meadow, with the me, many, meadow moments embossing folders. And then I cut them with the borders, basic borders dies. Then we stamped with all five in colors, all five of the new in colors. And we made these cards and then we mounted them onto in-color cardstock. We used the in-color bling and we did all that. And then I just wanted to show you just some that I'm working on. Because I said, like, I think I want to use these for my swaps. So I have a little folder here of ones I've been working on. Okay, so these are ones I'm working on. So I didn't really finish, but, you know, this is what, what I'm working on. So um, just lot, lots going on and I have all the strips cut. And I think I'm going to make a bunch of these. Because one of the swaps I'm, I'm doing, it only needs like 12 cards. And I have enough vellum for that. But there's another swap I'm doing, I need 26 cards. And I don't have enough vellum for that. Because I'm trying to keep some vellum aside for, for using for some... I have like a deluxe share coming up and all that. So, okay, so if you're interested in any of my paper shares or things like that, I'll do another video hopefully with cardstock share soon and show that. And what the In Color Club will look like, I'll show that. But I can't show what the Designer Series paper look will, will look like just yet because I don't have the Designer Series paper available to me until after May 4th. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for coming. And thank you all for answering each other's questions during this live broadcast so that I didn't have to keep looking at the comments, but I appreciate all the one comments I did see. That's all for now.
This is the papered chef.